All right, so I am going to talk a little bit about using ImageJ to do back calculations from uh, images of Otolis. And so I've written a macro that makes this a little bit easier. So let's walk through that and I'll show you what I'm doing. So first thing we're going to do is launch ImageJ. Uh, the new version is called Fiji. You don't have to install it. You just have to have it on your hard drive and double click the exe file and I haven't tested this with other versions of ImageJ so I don't know if it works with older versions or different versions but it works with this version and I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that so the first thing we need to do is to install the macro and so one way to do that, and the easiest way to do that, is to go to Plugins, Macros, Install. And then we have to browse for wherever you save the macro as a text file. And I saved it right here, and I've named it backcalculateodolith.txt. And so then you see it says one macro installed. And so you can go to Plugins, Macros, and you see... Measure Odoliths is now available here. You'll also notice that it's got a little number one in the square brackets. That means that there's been a shortcut set for this on the keyboard. And so to run the macro, all we have to do is hit the number one on the keyboard. Instead of having to come over here and click on this, which would work, but it's a lot easier to just hit that number one on the keyboard and run it that way. Okay. So now the macro is ready to go. We need to load in an image of an otolith. And so I've got uh, some saw guy otoliths here. I'm just going to take the first one. And you can see the otolith and you can see the focus and the annuli. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want this to be a little bit bigger so that I can more easily see where I'm marking. And the easy way to do that is to hit the plus symbol on your keyboard. And you can see that that zooms in. And then, of course, I can also drag this to be a little bigger. Rearrange a little. And so now I need to mark the focus, every annulus, and the edge of the otolith. And since I need to do to mark multiple things simultaneously, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use the multi-point tool. Now, yours, you may have the single point tool. If you right-click, you can change to the point tool. This will only mark a single point. But if you want to mark multiple points, you right-click and go to the multi-point tool. And so now I'm going to click on all those things. Here is the one thing you have to remember. This is the only thing that you have to do uh, to get this macro to work. Is you have to click on the focus first. Because everything is measured from the focus. And so the only way to tell the macro you know, which of these dots is the focus is to click on it first. So if, if you click on the focus first, then anything, everything else will work. So I'm going to click on the focus first. Now, I can click on each annulus, I can click on the scale edge, I can do these in any order and it'll be fine. It's just that first one has to be the focus. Got it? Good. So I'm going to go ahead and mark each of these, and again, I'm going to try and mark them in the same spot. So if I go to the, the middle of the annulus on the first one, I'm going to go to the middle on all of those. I like to go to the outer edge, and we try to keep them in a straight line. And you see that as you do the multi-point, it labels each one so that you can keep track of which point is which. That's, that's fantastic. And so you should have a mark for the focus, one mark for each annulus, and then a mark at the very edge of the otolith. And if you have trouble... If, if your points don't show up very well, you can go to Edit, 
options, point tool, and you can change the type of crosshairs, you can change the color, you can change the size. Uh, you see that it labels the points with the number because I have that checked. All right, So you can do that to make the points show up better. So now we have everything marked. Now we just need each of these distances. right? We need the distance to each annulus and the distance to the otolith edge. That's where the macro comes in. So we're going to run the macro and to, again to do that I'm just going to hit the number one on my keyboard and you see the results window pops up and let's look at these results. You see that the first thing it's done is it's put in the file name of this image. So if you look at the file name of this image that's in the results. That way you can keep track of which measurements go with which image. And if you name your images according to the ID number for the fish, then you can keep track of everything. Now here is what how the, the macro makes your life a lot easier. And that is it puts the otolith length in the first column. So if you look at these numbers, first off, these are unitless numbers. They're just in pixels because we're just going to look at the ratio of one to the other. So the units don't matter. So pixels is fine. And if we come back to the image, you realize that you can order these from the shortest distance to the longest distance, right? The shortest distance will be annulus one. Uh, each distance will be an annulus. And then the longest distance, the maximum value, is the length of the otolith. Now, if we didn't rearrange these, uh, if we just kept them in that order, then the last value would always be the otolith length. But, of course, the fish have different ages. You're going to have some, you know, this one's age 5, you're going to have some age 1, some age 6, whatever. Um, and so that last value would always be your otolith length, but it would be very difficult to work with that in Excel because you'd always have the, the last value would not be an annulus, it would be the otolith length, and, and it would be, uh, just a, you have to mess around with it in Excel to uh, calculate your, back calculate your lengths. This way, your otolith length is always in the first column, no matter what the age of the fish. That makes your life a lot easier when we copy this. Excuse me for those sounds, my idiot dogs are wrestling and they just knocked over a box. Anyway, um, so now we have the the maximum length, which is the otolith length in the first column, and then each successive length in order for each age. And you see we've labeled them H1, H2, H3, H4. That's it. That's the data that we need from image J. And we're going to put this into Excel. But before we do that, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do a number of images so we can just copy all the data at once. And since we're labeling them with the name of the image, we can get away with this. So I closed that one. I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to open another one. And again, I'm going to hit the plus sign on my keyboard. And I'm going to mark the focus first. And this time I'm going to mark this annulus and the scale edge. And I'm going to come back and mark this annulus. Because again, these don't matter what order as long as I do the focus first. Same deal. I'm going to hit the number one on my keyboard to launch the macro. And you see now we've got the new file name. Again, the otolith length is first. And you see how even though we didn't count, we didn't click on the annuli in, in the right order, we have the distances in the correct order. You also see that this fish is younger. And so for these other ages, it fills in zeros. We'll take care of that in Excel. Don't sweat that. So then I can knock out a bunch of these pretty quick. I can go to my third image, zoom in a little, focus, annulus, edge, number one on the keyboard. And so I can bang through these pretty quick. Okay, now there's uh, 
one thing I want to warn you about um, so you don't get messed up. I'm going to go ahead and um, open one of these and zoom, uh, get my points. I'm just going to go here. I just want to show you an example here so I'm not being very careful. Run the macro. That's good. Now, you don't have to close this window if you don't want to. You can go to File, Open, and you can grab this different image, zoom. Again, I'm not being super careful here. Uh, I'm just trying to do this for an example. Run the macro. See, that works great, okay? But you see you've got this Open Next command, and you might be tempted to use that, but don't. Okay, so the open next will do exactly that. It opens the next one. However, you see what, what the problem is. It didn't erase the old marks. And I could probably figure out a way to write the macro to fix this, but I don't want to. And so if you went ahead and marked this next one, you see that it's continuing from those old marks. And if you did that and you ran the macro, now you see you're up to like age whatever you know, 12, and you got you got a combination of the old, you know, it kept the old measurements and it made new measurements. Uh, you got a mess here, okay? So don't do that. All right, now I want to talk about how we're going to work with these values in Excel. So you see here, I've, I've measured a few odalis and a few different images, and I've got all my data in the results table here. So what I'm going to do is I could either go edit, select all, but what's easier is to just go control A to select all. And again, I could go edit, copy, or I could just go control C and copy. So now I'm going to come over to my Excel file. And you see in this Excel file, I have the date and the fish ID and the length of capture. I also have the weight, which we don't really need. I've got the age. Um, so I'm going to use all this data plus the data that I took from image J to back calculate. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to somewhere, I'm just going to randomly go equals max, open parentheses. And then I'm going to look at the, I'm, I'm trying to find the maximum age here. And so I can select that top cell. And another keyboard shortcut is Control, Shift, Down Arrow. And you see it selects all the way to the bottom. And when I hit Return, I get the maximum value in that column. So the maximum age is 6. And so that's all I wanted to know. And I could just scan and look for that. I could filter however you want to find the maximum age. And so then that is going to determine these columns here. So you see that I've set this up. The first columns count. That's just a count of the number of measurements that comes from image J. Then there's the file name, the odalith length, and then I have set this up for annulus 1, annulus 2, up to annulus 6, because I know I shouldn't have any more annuli than 6 because my maximum age was 6. Of course, if you're working with a different data set, you may have older or younger fish, right? I've also set up columns for the total length at age 1, the total length at age 2, up to the total length at age 6. So now that that's set up and I've copied the data from image J, I'm just going to select that first cell and go Control V, and there's the data from image J. Okay? And so those are the measurements from the otolith. Now I have to use those plus the length at capture which is right here, to back calculate the length at each age. And so I'm going to set up some, a formula and copy that formula and make this really easy. Um, before I begin, I also want to come back here and I want to check my file name against my fish ID and make sure that I'm putting the correct data with the correct fish, and I am. So what I want to do is come up here to total length at age 1. And so to back calculate that, I'm going to go equals, and I take the annulus length 
at age one divided by the total length of the otolith and then I'm going to multiply that by the length at capture and when I hit return there I see that this fish was 291.77 millimeters at age one that's my estimate now of course we don't want that many decimal places so I'm going to decrease and only have one decimal place now if I copied this over to get the length at the other ages you see we have a problem we have some crazy numbers right and that's because when I copy that over each of these references updates to be one cell to the right uh, you know, you know it's they're, they're, they're relative to the current cell and so I'm taking L2 divided by K2 times D2 and that's a crazy number and then I'm doing LM2 so the problem is is that I need to lock down to the J column and to the C column those columns should never change in my formula what should just change is the annulus length so let's go back to my original formula let's delete the bad stuff now if you look at my original formula J2 should never change right J2 is the otolith length and we purposely put that in the first column that was the whole point of the macro so since that should never change I want to put a dollar sign in front of the J and so now it will always uh, look to the J column by the same token the C column has the total length in it and so I want to put a dollar sign in front of the C column and now when I hit return that doesn't change this value but now when I copy it over now I have the correct estimate of length at H so if I click on this cell you see that I'm taking L2 which was annulus 2 length but I'm still dividing it by that same value in the J column and I'm still multiplying it by the same value in the C column you see I've locked it to J and to C and so now I have the correct formula you'll note that I don't have a dollar sign in front of the row now um, in class I may have told you wrong so that I want to make sure and clear this up we don't want to lock it to this row because this row is just for this fish we just want to lock it to those columns and so now if I copy this down you see it updates for every fish so if I look at uh, you know age two for this fish you'll see that I'm I'm looking um, you know I'm looking in row three but I'm still looking in the proper columns for each of these calculations that's what the dollar sign does for you okay so that's great now the only problem left are these zeros right because this Excel is going to treat this as a zero value and so if we took an, a mean like a mean length at age three it's going to use all these zeros and that's going to mess up your average right we got to get rid of these we want these to be blank cells now there's a way to do this in Excel to replace zeros with blanks we could do it that way however I'd like to do it in the formula so I never have to mess with it and so I'm gonna once again modify my formula so I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to uh, make an if statement so I'm gonna go if and then open parentheses and the first thing is what are we gonna test what's the if testing well we're gonna say if this annulus length is greater than zero than a comma so if the annulus length is greater than zero that means we have a measurement there and so we want to use our formula that we just created so we're gonna leave that so if this first statement is true it's gonna do the middle statement however if that first statement is false we need to tell it what to do and if that first statement is false 
if that annulus length is not greater than zero, then we, you know, we don't have a measurement that that fish wasn't that old or whatever. And so we need to fill in a blank value. And so we just go double quote, double quote. So that's going to be what it puts in the cell if the annulus length is not greater than zero. And we close parentheses and we hit return. And you see it didn't change that one. But when we copy this over, you see that last cell now is blank because the annulus length is not greater than zero. And so when we copy this form, these formulas down for the other fish, all those zeros turn into blanks. And so now we're done. Now we have that formula and we're going to save. Um, so now as we collect more data from image J and paste it here, we can just copy those formulas down and it will update correctly and we've got the data that we need. All right.